All right. I think we can start the sessions now. Yeah, because it's 8.01 already, right? Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Mei Pei. I'm the host for today's first sessions of study this or that season three. Today, we are presenting the topic on MBA and ACCA accounting in the UK University. To have some interaction started, could you please type in the chat box on the city that you are currently in? Yeah, can you share where you are where you are currently now? Are you from the KL, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia? Okay, that's good. We have one from Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> okay, that's good. Thanks for answering. Okay, thank you everyone for answering. Let me introduce you on AECC Global. AECC Global is a university placement agency that specializes in overseas education. Do follow us and get in touch with us via our AECC social media channels or visit our website for more information. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box. I will bring them up at the end of the presentation. Without further ado, let's welcome our two presenters today. It's our honor to have Mr. Kevin Dunn, who is the Southeast Asia and South Asia Regional Manager from Coventry University, who will be sharing more on the MBA courses in the UK. And we also have Ms. Maggie Yong, who is the Student Recruitment Manager APEC from BPP University, who will be sharing more on the accounting in the UK University. Welcome both. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome. Okay, so let, yeah, let me start the first question to Mr. Kevin. Kevin, would you like to introduce the MBA courses that Coventry offers? Of course, thank you. And thank you to AECC for inviting me here um, today. So um, MBA courses, there are many different MBA types, some that require work experience, some that don't require work experience. Um, when I first started working in international education 10, 11 years ago, an MBA wasn't popular and something has evolved and, and changed over the past decade. Um, so Coventry have two campuses and they're both designed for different student sets. So our London campus is designed for what we term as fresher MBA. So students that have recently graduated that do not necessarily have work experience. Uh, for these students, we have an MBA in global business international marketing, global finance, human resource management, and international fashion management. For students that have two years or more of managerial experience, we would invite them to our Coventry main campus, um, where we have uh, general MBAs, uh, but also specialist MBAs in, for example, healthcare management or artificial intelligence. So there's a whole array of different MBAs um, for different student types, depending upon what their, their needs are here at Coventry. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, so how about Maggie? Maggie, would you want to introduce the ACCA course uh, at BPP University? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Mayfei, for inviting me here. And um, hi, nice to meet all of you here. Um, so to start with, um, I would like to introduce our ACCA professional accounting courses um, that we BPP offers. Uh, we do have advanced diploma in accounting and finance, uh, MSc accounting and finance, and also the ACCA professional paper where uh, we can do uh, papers by papers uh, in BPP itself. So um, for these courses, uh, it's actually offered in our London, Birmingham, and also our Manchester Centre. So um, yeah, we have um, these three main courses uh, that can um, the students can do for uh, accounting, uh, accountancy or also ACCA. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Maggie. Yeah, uh, how about Kevin? There are so many types of MBA. How to determine which MBA is more preferable for the future and career growth? Wow, that's such a difficult question um, because there are so many variations of MBAs. Of course, MBA means a master in business administration. So in a nutshell, you have general MBAs, executive MBAs, specialist MBAs, MBAs that don't require work experience. 
Um, and most MBAs look at uh, core subjects. So they will nearly always look at finance, marketing, human resources, and some degree of strategy. And then the next four modules is often a specialization. Um, the MBA is the most popular course um, across the world. It's the most studied program uh, available out there. Um, and it's important to note that uh, an MBA is a generalist degree that focuses on the different subject types. Now, the question was, how does somebody determine which MBA is most appropriate for them? It's so subjective and there are so many variables and I'm speculating here, I suspect in the UK, there's probably over 200 different MBAs available. Um, so my advice to any student that is thinking about an MBA, speak to AECC to actually have one-on-one -on -one counseling. But in short, um, a general MBA is designed for a student that doesn't necessarily want a specialization. It's a pure business MBA. One with a um, specialization allows a student to, to almost, if I compare it to the American system, major minor. You get your core business modules and then you get your specialization if you want it. An executive uh, MBA is one that may carry additional accreditation beyond simply the university stamp. It may be AMBER accredited, um, but often the limitations to students are what's their CGPA or, or what did they graduate from from high school? What's their work experience? And also what's their budget? Because as we talk about different MBAs, there is a varying price range. And in the UK, it can be anywhere from, I imagine, 10,000 to 100,000 pounds for an MBA. Um, so I'm going to sidestep that question and encourage students to say, right, I'm going to speak with AECC. I'm going to tell them my budget, my CGPA and my work experience. And only then would we, we be able to, to respond to that question um, specifically. It's a minefield. There's many courses. But the good news is there's an MBA for everybody. Uh, depending upon what their personal needs are. Thank you so much for the well explanation, Kevin. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, many students still wondering what is it, uh, how to choose the MBA. But you are right. Feel free to contact our ACC counselor. Then we can get them uh, to understand the different MBA available. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Maggie, what is the study roadmap for ACCA? Okay, um, in terms of to start your ACCA journey, it's depending on uh, whether uh, what level is your high school qualification where uh, some of the students graduate at year 11 and some students they graduate at year 12. Normally, if um, you are year 11 student graduate in uh, from like Malaysia SBM, um, you will uh, definitely have to go through a CAT uh, course, a uh, certified accounting technician, or you can actually take up the foundation in account uh, from ACCA and with this you can actually get a um, three exemptions from um, uh, nine papers of the fun nine fundamental papers and you can then proceed to our advanced diploma where it's actually um, will take you about a year from this advanced diploma uh, for, for you to complete the remaining of the six papers. And then you can move on to our master in accounting and finance where you are supposed to finish up your four professional paper and also um, three uh, BBB modules from uh, our institute itself. And upon the completion of this, uh, you can actually uh, complete all your ACCA papers uh, with a master as well, yeah. So this is uh, normally how um, the students will be able to go through the uh, uh, from year 11. But if let's say you are year 12 student, uh, for example, like you have um, A-levels or STPM, you can actually go directly into our advanced diploma, but of course um, without any exemption. And therefore this advanced diploma will take you like a little bit longer, like one additional semester longer, where you have to do one and a half years and before you can proceed to this master in accounting and finance in order for you to complete your four professional papers and also the three BPP modules where uh, we include um, uh, digital leadership, data science and also a business project. Yeah. So yeah, this is how, this is how um, your ACCA uh, accountancy journey uh, will look like if yeah, you are from this, um, this uh, level of qualification. All right, thank you, Maggie. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> so next, we move to Kevin. Kevin, can you tell us about the fundamentally, what is the difference between MSc and MBA? 
yes, so an MSc, for those that don't know, means a master in science. An MBA is a master in business administration. But in a business context, it doesn't really mean science at all. Now, history lesson. Back in the 19th century, most of the universities we know today didn't exist, but those that did exist were teaching MSCs. Um, so they were allowing students to become technical experts at their subject areas. Coventry's roots go back to 1843, and at the time we were teaching design subjects. In the 20th century, business or large organizations were inundated with technical experts, but they didn't have the skills um, for individuals to have an overview and make a strategic decision, um, taking into consideration the different components um, of a business function. So in the US, um, they developed the MBA. The MBA was born. Um, as mentioned earlier, the MBA focuses on the fundamentals of business. So as mentioned, it's marketing. I always have to look up as I think and remind myself, marketing, human resource, finance, strategy, um, sometimes economics, and then a specialization uh, if appropriate. So I don't like to call an MBA a generalist program because it can also be a specialized program. But an MSc or Master in Science, uh, as mentioned, was introduced back in the 19th century um, across the UK, Europe, uh, and uh, most modern uh, countries. There's also an MA. So the analogy I'm going to give is across marketing programs, and it's the easiest way to distinguish. If you were to look at curriculum for a marketing program, MBA, four business modules, four marketing modules. The MSc, let's say in digital marketing, will give you four specialized marketing modules. So if you really want to be an expert at something, it would normally be the MSc that you would undertake. Historically, what would happen is students would study their undergrad, they study their MSc, they go off and work, and then 10 years later, they may come back for an MBA. But what's happened is, trends have changed and students are now replacing an MSc with an alternative uh, MBA. So in short summary, an MSc will make you an expert in a specific area. An MBA will give you the fundamentals of business. So as a business leader, as a business owner, whilst you may not be a finance or a marketing expert, if you own a business, you need to make a strategic decision taking that into consideration uh, with your specialization. I hope that makes sense. And if I've left, left anything out, please present questions in the chat function, but in the simplest forms, that's the distinguishing differences between an MSc and an MBA. That's a very clear explanation, at least to me. So uh, attendees, if you're not clear with it, feel free to put your questions under the chat box, uh, sorry, under the Q&A box, yeah. So next I move to Maggie. Maggie, what's the similarity or difference between ACCA versus IECAEW? Because we often get this question from our students too. Um, well, um, let me just um, give you some uh, of the examples where, uh, for example, like ACCA, um, the certificate was actually, uh, or exam is actually organized by the Association of Chartered Certified uh, Accountants, uh, like ACCA UK, while um, the exams for the ICAW, they are actually organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, ICAW uh, in the UK itself. But um, if looking at the papers of um, the pattern, they actually have like the similarity where they also have um, each of them, they actually have like three levels like ACCA, they have like applied knowledge, they have applied skills, and then uh, the last one would be strategic professional papers. And for ICAW, they actually have like certificate levels, uh, professional levels, and also the advanced level. Um, itself, yeah, if you to complete uh, the entire ICAW. And um, looking at the duration of ACCA, uh, some of the students might take a longer period of time um, in order for them to complete from the fundamental to the professional because um, they can actually take like uh, within a 10 years uh, period in order for you to do so uh, from uh, counting from the first uh, successful exam that they have done uh, for ACCA. But however, um, most of our student, if um, they are not uh, into the working, uh, they might take about three uh, or maximum four years in order for them to complete the entire course. While uh, mm -hmm. for ICAW, uh, we believe that most of the candidate, they can actually complete the entire or all the levels uh, within the span time of um, like a three years, uh, uh, yeah, just like a, for a three years. And um, if looking at the fees for uh, ACCA, 
it is very uh the overall cost of the cost lies between like maybe per uh uh between like thousand two or to two thousand pounds uh which this can include uh the, their registration fees um their annual subscription fees their exam fees and also the exemption fees but um the entire overall cost uh will be uh they have like a huge difference because it depends on um uh, when um they register uh for their uh, exam because they actually ha have like early bird discount or uh, late penalty yeah but but for ICAW um, the annual uh, student fee is like uh, just like 180 pounds uh, plus VAT and then uh, their exam fees is like fixed where they have like certificate level fixed at 72 pounds professional level like fixed at 103 pounds advanced level 175 pounds and their case study um, is about 267 pounds yeah so um, yeah so this is uh, mainly uh, the Similarity or some of the differences that they have over ACC and ICAW. But if you ask me, there's actually more. Uh, but um, for us to just cover uh, at this session, yeah, let's um, uh, talk about this first. And if you'd like to know more, we can actually have another session with ACC. Um, yeah, we will actually can go through more yeah, on the similarity or the differences. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kevin, why and why um and when does a person should consider an MBA degree? Two word answer. Anytime. <laughs> um, anytime. You, you know, I was once at the KLCC Exhibition Center um, on behalf of Coventry, and this possibly 13, 14 year old boy came across and said, I want to study an MBA. And I thought to myself, hang on, <laughs> you can complete your high school, your undergrad, then your postgrad. You know, some people have a mapped out journey and those that do are very, very lucky because they know what will take them to where they're going. Um, I consider myself in simple terms, a travel agent. Um, I will ask a student, where do they want to go? And I will advise on the form of transport they need to take to get them there. So if they want to become a business leader, the form of transport will be their undergrad, their master's, maybe sometimes a PhD, and that will get them to where they want to be. So students can consider any time. What I would encourage, however, is that early applications, and I assume this might be the same for BPP as well, um, allow students to access a greater share of scholarships. Scholarship deadlines are normally much sooner or much earlier. So the big scholarships, for example, um, the British government scholarship Chevening through the British Council, that's often, the deadline for that is in November for the following September. So I would say um, there's no deadline as such. Even if you contact us in July, if there's capacity, we will be open to accepting you, subject to you qualifying for the course. I would say it's more about if you need some financial support, financial aid in order to help you secure your MBA, then an earlier application is better. Um, I've seen applications already for September 2022, and we're yet to see September 2021. Um, so at a student's convenience, um, all I would say is a later application may limit your options and may also limit your access to any funding that you need to complete your, your MBA. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Maggie, is ACCA a must in order for students to be accountant? What are the differences between the Bachelor in Accounting and ACCA? Um, normally, uh, it's a yes if you want to be a certified accountant. But um, if let's say um, talking about the accounting degree and also the ACCA professional qualification, um, definitely there is um, uh, quite some difference uh, where uh, if you pursue an accounting degree, normally an academic degree will be awarded by a university, while the ACCA professional accounting uh, qualification will be awarded by ACCA professional body itself. And and um, uh, it's also depending on the modules that you'll be studying where if you are doing an accounting degree, normally you will cover like a very broad uh, uh, areas of subject uh, as the core structure is made up of the core accounting modules and also some of the elective which is uh, relevant to um, uh, any field like maybe perhaps you can do a uh, uh, bachelor in accounting major uh, or minor in marketing or business, something like that. Yeah, uh, where you have to do some of the modules from this area and if let's say for ACCA normally they will very focus on the technical aspect of the principle of accounting only so basically you do very straightforward papers where you do the fundamental uh, paper one two three until nine and you do your professional paper something like that yeah and uh, if you ask me uh, which one is faster uh, 
for accounting degree, normally they will take up to like five to six years, um, uh, depending from which level that you start. For example, if you start from year 11, it will take you uh, approximately five years, like it covers foundation and then um, three years of degree and one year of ACCA. Uh, if you were to do a master, it will be additional one year, which is five to six years. But if you do um, uh, ACCA uh, from your year 11, maybe perhaps you can start with your CAT for one year and our advanced diploma for a year and also your master in uh, accounting and finance, uh, which cover your four professional paper as well. And this takes only like three years um, from your SPM. And lastly, if we talk about accounting uh, degree, normally students, uh, they can actually branch uh, into a career where uh, both in and outside the accountancy field. While um, and normally for uh, if you graduate from um, like uh, ACCA, uh, normally the ACCA members, they work in the accounting and finance field only. <laughs> So, yeah, so you can see that um, actually um, there are uh, quite some differences if you take up the uh, accounting degree or also uh, the main ACCA qualification. Yeah. I see. Thank you for the explanation, Maggie. Yeah. Mm, all right. Next, we move back to Kevin. Kevin, just now you mentioned there are so many different types of MBA. So what are the key elements to look for when choosing MBA degree? You know, I, I could always answer these questions with one word or many words, and I always opt for, for many words. Um, the answer is why. Why do you want an MBA? Um, what are your short-term and long-term objectives? Um, quite often in, uh, you know, Thailand and, and Indonesia, I meet lots of students that have a family business. So their short-term goal is not to work for the family business. They want to spend as long as they can pursuing their own career before mum and dad retires and they have to go back into it. So first of all, understand why. Um, and the key elements are an MBA is not an easy program. Um, it is a challenging program, as are all master's degrees, as are all undergraduate programs. If it was easy, I would have credentials as, as long as my leg. Um, but sadly, I don't. Um, so it's understanding yourself in that, OK, mum and dad have said you have to have an MBA because there is some prestige that goes with it. An MBA and an MSc academically is on the same level. But by way of branding and perception, it's actually significantly different. Why do you want an MBA? Um, and often it is a parental choice. And then beyond that, it would be understanding, OK, so what's my preference? What's going to motivate me to complete my studies if I'm a younger student? As a mature student, you have absolute control. If you've got uh, professional experience, then it is yours and, and possibly your, your, your partner's um, uh, decision. But what will keep mum and dad happy? What will keep me happy and what will motivate me? Um, but I did mention this before. Um, whenever we make a choice, we always have to consider the limitations. So some of the key elements would be, what are the entry requirements? Do I qualify? Do I have the financial capability? Does it have my specializations? Um, do I want further accreditation beyond the, the institutional stamp? Also, what sort of class group do I want? Um, so in some MBA classes, the average age is, let's say, 32. Uh, the fresher MBAs, it's 22, 23. So it's a much younger um, uh, demographic. So once again, I've not really answered the question purely because it's so subjective and variable depending upon the individual's needs. Um, it is distinctly different from course to course, and that will be responded to at an individual level um, based upon uh, the limitations. But if anyone contacts ACC um, or, or Coventry, if you understand why, we will be able to align you with the perfect course that works for you. Okay, thank you, Karen. I think I strongly agree with you that when a student decides to do an MBA, they need to also start thinking what is the purpose for them to do the MBA? You know, different people will have different purposes. That's a very good answer for it. Okay, uh, next, Maggie, how do I know whether ACCA is the right thing for me? Mm, okay, actually, this is um, quite a good question. Where um, normally I will tell the student, um, 
the first thing that you need to do is you need to learn and uh, read uh, more about ACCA and see whether um, this is really for you or not. And then um, the second thing is look at the examination. Um, is that what you really want? Because, you know, sometimes students, they actually have preference on the types of examination. So um, I would ask the student, like, uh, maybe you should go and understand how their exam um, or how is the uh, pattern of the exam. And yeah, you should go and check all the exam details details and um, finally they should make like a quick uh, self-assessment where um, you have to ask yourself uh, do you really uh, are you someone who are really uh, love um, like challenges because you know um, ACCA is considered as a very uh, quite difficult exam uh, and if you have the attitude of not like easy uh, give up or uh, you have the strong spirit because you know uh, if you fail one uh, ACCA paper you have to do the receipt and you must do the the receipt in order for you to finish up um, the entire thing so if you really love um, this hard and tough exam then maybe perhaps you can consider this uh, course and um, the second thing is uh, if let's say uh, do you have like a very strong um, English language because the exam papers are uh, actually prepared and uh, by the board of the qualified expert accountants uh, from uh, UK and the question style is uh, might be a bit different compared to our uh, what we are doing in uh, from our local university. So uh, if you think that uh, you really uh, you are able to do so, then uh, your answer is yes. Then yes, you can actually consider of um uh, taking this course and um. The last one, I would say that if you think that or see yourself like as a chartered accountant in the future, so um, yeah, then yeah, you may consider this because uh, many people will actually, uh, sometimes they will assume that accountants only deals with uh, numbers where this is um, normally uh, not the case uh, because uh, you need to understand the law uh, of the countries and then uh, the standard deals uh, within the accounting issues and then uh, yeah, the company's business plan. So basically, if you think that... Um, yeah, you might be uh, wants to be an accountant, then uh, this might be a career for you. So if you think that all this is a yes for your answer or uh, when you do a self-check, then uh, yeah, yes, maybe you can consider uh, ACCA as uh, one of the course that you should do. That's a very good information. <laughs> yeah, that especially I think tonight we have some SBM leavers, you know, or IGCSE student. They're pretty young, so they do not know, you know, whether SCCA or M uh, yeah. especially suit them or not. That's yes. a very good tips. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next I want to ask uh Kevin, could you please share some insights on how the commentary MBA is being conducted? Yes, I was born 20 years too late. I wish I was born 20 <laughs> years later. Um, because the MBA doesn't have any exams. For me, when I was assessed at university, it was primarily exam-based. Um, <clears throat> and of course, when you work, you're never examined. Simply, if you do a good job, you get a promotion, you get a pay rise. It's a very different assessment method in a professional environment. And that's been adapted into an academic context. Um, so the evaluation is through group projects, <clears throat> excuse me, individual projects, assignments, company reports. Um, and it really tests your ability to perform well um, in a job. Our MBAs include uh, extended professional practice. That's where, so normally semester one, semester two, that's classroom time where you're researching your various modules that are relevant to your MBA. Semester three is either an internship. So for students that want to, to, to gain further work experience, they can do so. It's a consulting project, which is where students work for business on a research project, but they're on campus. Uh, there's a traditional dissertation. They can complete an entrepreneurship project, um, which is about you developing your business plan as part of your academic studies. Um, but then when you graduate, you've got your business plan ready to execute. Um, but some students want more work experience in simply three months. So the extended professional practice allows a student to um, work in a controlled environment um, <clears throat> for uh, up to nine months. Uh, so then they graduate actually with some decent work experience as well as their qualification. Um, and I said controlled environment. And the reason why that is, is that if a student goes off to work, whether it's on their three month or their nine month internship, we need to be able to evaluate that. And if they're just working in a business day to day, it would be impossible to evaluate. So when they work for organizations, 
it's project based so that they then write a company report and essentially they may be given a marketing problem um, and they will evaluate that over the period they'll research it and present their findings back to the business as a potential solution so the way in which it's delivered it feels quite unusual at our London campus. Students arrive and they expect a traditional campus, which is what they have at Coventry main campus, 30,000 students versus 2,000 in London. In London, when they arrive, they feel like they're at work. That's a conscious effort to get students to adapt um, to their surroundings. And being in the workplace, there are soft skills that nobody teaches you, etiquette that come naturally from being in a work environment. So we often throw curveballs at students. We throw problems at them. They complain and say, this is not working. But that's a conscious effort because in a workplace, your seniors will give you problems to deal with and you have to come up with solutions. Um, so an example, uh, we will mix up nationality groups. At London, there's 110 different nationalities. At Coventry, it's about 140. We will purposely mix up those um, uh, demographics purely because if you work for a multinational organization, it's likely that you're going to be working from people across the world. So in these projects, you will adapt your communication skills to be able to ensure that people from sub-Saharan Africa, from Europe, the Americas, and anywhere else in the world can hear the point that you're making. So we do throw problems at students, which happen in the workplace, which don't feel like a traditional academic environment. But the biggest one for me, if there were no exams and I was assessed on how well I do my job, I would have got a distinction but I was examined, so, so my results were slightly different, but we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Karen. I think, I think I will contact you after the session today because it sounds so interesting for the MBA at Coventry. I may want to join uh, the, the MBA program too. Sounds very, really very interesting. All right, next. Um, okay, Maggie, uh, can I ask you about this? Uh, why professional accounting qualification is really worth for the money and time? Okay, let me just tell you, um, you know what, because um, this professional accounting, uh, uh, normally they are, it will be in high demand. Uh, for example, like in Malaysia, uh, we actually need about 60,000 of professional accountants by the year of 2020, but guess uh, how many that we have at the moment. Uh, we actually have about 36,000 only, which is like 50% uh, lesser uh, from what we, uh, like, uh, what we should have uh, at the moment. So basically, our uh, government is uh, putting in like uh, initiative to promote this accountancy as a profession. And mm -hmm. so rest assured that if you choose this uh, pathway, uh, you will have uh, plenty of support uh, from everywhere, including the government as well. And um, yeah, the second thing is actually uh, there is a survey from the committee of the uh, to strengthen the accountancy profession, um, the employers actually state that uh, about 80, uh, 64 percent of them they actually indicate that their main criteria to when they recruit the uh, 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 professional or uh, staff or employee, um, they normally would love to have them with professional qualification and they have actually relevant market experience. Yeah, so um, I would say that uh, this is one of the two uh, uh, reason why. Uh, this professional accountancy uh, is uh, really worth your time and also the uh, money. Um, the next one I, I, I want to say is um, like the professional qualification is actually globally recognized. Uh, for example, like uh, nowadays uh, we are living in an increase. Uh, I mean, like increasing a mobile world where uh, organizations is like everywhere. Um, like you see, uh, we have like offices in. Um, uh, Malaysia and some will be in Singapore and um, yeah, the other, at the other part of the world. So basically, if you have this professional qualification, definitely it is globally recognized where you do not have any issues on um, to work at um, the other uh, uh, offices that you have in the other part of the world. And last but not least, um, it's actually added a, a prestigious acronym to your name card where um, I think if you look at the ACCA Chartered Accountants um, name card, normally they will add by, behind their name, um, they actually have like ACCA, uh, APA or ACA in their, uh, at the end of their name, showing that the world that you have actually conquered all the professional paper uh, that you have overcome like hundreds of sleepless nights uh, that you have been through all 
all the exams. Yeah. So basically, yeah, this is uh, what I want to say that, um, yeah, this actually, uh, this will actually worth your time and also your money uh, for getting all these professional qualifications. I see. Thank yeah. you, Maggie. Mm. <laughs> Kevin, uh, next, do I have to come from a background of business in order to pursue MBA? Or it could be anything, from example, the science background can also do MBA? Everywhere we look, there's business. Now, I'm an Apple fan, so I've got an iPhone, I've got a <laughs> mouse. Everything we look at, there's a business context. So whether you've studied dance, whether you've studied engineering, there's still a business associated to that. So if you have a dance school, that dance school will have accountants who have studied ACCA that will run their finances for them. It will have marketing experts. So um, you don't need to have a business background. And when I meet with young students at high school, um, what I often share with them is there's no rush to study business because business waits for everybody. All you need to do is complete your undergraduate degree or of course your, your ACCA and the MBA will be there waiting for you. Um, yeah. Of course, some MBAs may be subject to work experience, two years, five years, some even 10 years. Um, but anybody can study business because uh, undergrad students often become technical experts and then they want to learn, right, how do I make money from this? Um, so anybody from any background, providing they have the relevant CGPA, they can then subsequently uh, study a business program at master's level or an MBA. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Yep, uh, Maggie, now today is all about IR 4.0. What's yes. the future like for accounting? What is the possible career pathway for an accountant? Mm, I would say that um, artificial intelligent AI can be very, very po uh, powerful and they are actually improving very, very quickly. Um, they can actually provide outputs that can be uh, extremely accurate, uh, replacing, and in some cases, is far superseding all the human's effort, you know. And um, however, what I want to say is they do not replicate um, human's intelligence, although they are they are uh, AI, they have AI, okay? So uh, we need to recognize um, the strength strengths and limits uh, of this different uh, intelligence and uh, we can build the understanding of the best uh, ways for the humans and also uh, how the computers, how we can work together with the computers. For example, uh, we can actually uh, able to get, uh, the accountants are able to get all the data like in real time with this AI uh, uh, assistant. Uh, they can also actually facilitate data extract from a very huge pool uh, uh, of um, a data uh, group of data and um, they can actually also do uh, raise a very good uh, or high quality uh, or higher accuracy and more details uh, to improve um, the efficiency of the data that they have uh, retrieved from uh, this uh, pool of uh, uh, data. So uh, what I want to say is um, although everyone will be saying that uh, okay with this AI uh, I think um, uh, there's no more accountants or accountants there will be no more jobs for us. Uh, I, I mean, I would say that uh, professional accountants who are well versed in these new technologies, right? Um, they are likely remain very strong in demand if you can uh, cope with all this um, uh, digital. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, Maggie. Kevin, uh, we often also get this question from our students. Do I need to have minimum working experience to study MBA? Maybe you can tell us more, especially the commentary MBA. Yes, but no, but yes, but no, but yes, but no, depending on the MBA that you want. So at London, no, not at all. Um, whereas Coventry, you need at least two years of managerial experience. That may not be managing of people. It may be processes. It may be something else within an organisation. Um, and also uh, an MBA will actually allow a student the other way around in that if they don't have an undergraduate degree, but they have significant work experience. Now there's no limit on that as such, but let's say 10 years where they can demonstrate they have the ability to pass the course, they're also um, invited in. So there's lots of flexibility depending upon the type of MBA um, that a student wants. If it's an executive MBA, that will often look for 10 years experience, but the Coventry um, ones are London, no work experience, Coventry, at least two years of managerial experience. Mm, all right, thank you, Kevin. Maggie, what is the requirement in order to begin the journey in ACCA? Um, normally, if um, the students have like uh, two A levels and also three IGCSE uh, 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 
papers, okay, uh, with the separate subject including, but this must be including the English and mathematics. So with this, they are actually eligible to go into this uh, course, yeah, to start the ACCA or our advanced diploma course. All right. Thank you, Maggie. Okay, Kevin, next is how does an MBA degree provide me competitive advantages? Money, 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 and money. Um, I had to go and research the answer to this question um, because when I was a student, an MSc would have been the default or an MA, then an MBA later on, but times have changed. And I was looking at um, a QS survey um, and what it showed was that um, students that completed an MBA, I'm going to read this word for word just so that I'm not misquoted and students don't contact me in 10 years time saying, why am I not earning this money? Um, so according to a QS top MBA report, um, MBA are among the highest paid uh, graduates on the job market. Um, and the average income for an MBA is much higher than an employee with a regular master's. Um, so QS state that reports or it reports that the average salary for an MBA grad in the UK um, in US dollars is $92,400 with an average bonus of 30,000. Now we must bear in mind, the center of financial markets are in central London. So some of them will be earning millions and, and some um, uh, slightly less, but it just goes to show um, the return on investment that MBA grads uh, do get. Um, so it is, um, it is quite significant. And I also spend time in the subcontinent. Every job advert I see, and I find it strange sometimes, it asks for an MBA grad. So actually there are jobs designed just for MBA graduates. So there's the competitive advantage because I see it in job advertisements and that's how students prepare themselves by satisfying the criteria set out um, in the job um, advertisement. So, so that would be it based upon the QS top MBA report. Um, but what was interesting, whilst the UK was in the top 10 um, of countries, it was in the top four, I believe, in terms of uh, graduate salaries with an MBA, Number one in the world, students bear this in mind if you're chasing the money, the highest paid MBA grads in the world are in Switzerland, which is a tax haven. So there you go, bear that in mind for the future. Switzerland <laughs> MBA grads get paid more than any other country in the world. Hmm. It's interesting to know <laughs> yes. that, Kevin. Yes. Thank <laughs> you for sharing the information with us. All right, uh, Maggie, um, at this stage, Malaysia and Indonesia are in the amber travel list while Singapore is in the green travel list to the UK. Mm -hmm. So what are the current UK travel regulations for the amber list and the, also the green travel list? Um, as far as I checked um, uh, this afternoon, um, normally for the amber list, they are first, uh, firstly, they're supposed to take a COVID test before they leave the country. And then um, they should book and pay for a day two and day eight of uh, COVID tests uh, uh, upon the arrival in England. And then they have to complete a passenger locator form when they arrive there. And upon the arrival, you need to be quarantined at home or the place where you are staying for at least 10 days. And um, you should take a COVID test uh, on or, uh, day two or on or after day eight. And if you are from the green list, uh, basically you just have to uh, um, take the COVID test before you leave the country and you just have to book and pay for um, the COVID test for the day two. And um, same, you have to uh, complete the passenger locator form. And upon the arrival, uh, you must take the COVID test uh, on or before day two. And you do not need to quarantine unless your result is positive. And if you are... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, when you're in UK and if let's say you travel with someone who are um, tested positive, you are required to uh, be quarantined. Yeah, if the NHS call you. So yeah, these are the uh, uh, slight differences between the amber and also the green list. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Ke mm. Kevin, from your side, do you have anything else to add on about this? Mm. Um, if, uh, if I may add, just to, 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 to comment on the red list, if for any reason uh, countries in Southeast Asia drop into the red list, the difference between red and amber is the amber is self-quarantined, so you can go to your student accommodation, no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the red list, then you have to go into government quarantine. Uh, mm -hmm. Fortunately, in Southeast Asia, there are, nobody's on the red list um, mm -hmm. at this moment in time. Um, but it's a forever changing environment. So yes. just referring to Maggie, she emphasized yeah. today that's the information yeah. um, I checked. <laughs> As and when you're traveling just to make sure that what you have is up yes. to date and if you just type covid uk 
um, UK FCO, the link will come up and it will give you um, a list of what countries fall into what categories. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Robin. all right. Yeah. <laughs> because like Malaysia now is getting so high cases, hopefully it yeah. will fall under the red list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> please no. Mm, please no, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Kevin, uh, another question for you. Entrepreneurship is also a taught topic. Is there any relationship between the entrepreneurship and MBA? Uh, yes, I mean, you can study an MBA in entrepreneurship, you can study an MA in entrepreneurship, you can study an MSc in entrepreneurship. So it does get confusing when a student wants to study entrepreneurship. Um, I've covered the MBA components. So what an MBA in entrepreneurship will do, four core modules and then four entrepreneurship modules. On a entrepreneurship program, the curriculum teaches the fundamentals of a specific science whilst applying business applications related to um, that particular area. So it really focuses on the soft skills because an entrepreneur is like being an artist. Um, at high school, my teacher, Mrs. Davenport, wrote on my homework, Kevin, this is terrible, please try again. I took it back and she said, Kevin, this is worse than your first attempt, please see me. What I learned from that is I was never going to be an artist because I didn't have that God-given skill. And it's the same in an entrepreneurial environment because you need to be resilient. You need to be a certain type of individual. So an MA or an MSc will focus more on opportunity recognition. What is an opportunity? It will look at marketing, but it will look at marketing specifically for entrepreneurs and new business. Marketing is an area where we can spend a lot, a lot of money, waste a lot of money, and there's no return on investment. I set up a business uh, some time ago and I spent so long on my branding and my website, which generated zero income. It gave me no money, no business whatsoever. So what the entrepreneurship program will do, it will really help you to project manage your own business and put it into a logical order of implementation. Um, and it will teach you where to spend money, where money's right, but it will also help you see opportunities where nobody else does. I'll give you an example. Um, which one should I give? Target, the, uh, super, the supermarket chain store in the US. Now their money is based upon selling produce and they have systems that they've built that will tell them how many chocolate bars do they have on a shelf in Illinois? How many cans of Coke do they have in the fridge at a particular store in New York? So they built this amazing software and for them, it was an overhead. It was never an income stream. Then they saw that the American government were losing track of criminals and they went to the government saying, hang on, I can tell you how many peanuts we've got in a, sorry, bags of peanuts we've got in a particular store. How can you tell us where this human being, how come you can't tell where these human beings are? So what they did is they turned what was an overhead into an income and they sold this software to the US government. And there's many, many examples like that, that traditionally the normal person, the naked eye would not see, but an entrepreneur will see an opportunity where nobody else does. Um, so there is a direct link, um, but it's a very different skill set for a very different type of individual. And I think, and it's something universities can't evaluate, it is a God-given skill that somebody has that a university can nurture and help develop um, to make that individual into a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Next, Ke uh, Maggie, what's the vaccination process or status for the student in the UK? Is there any further advice for students who are planning to go to the UK to further their studies? Um, yes, I would say that, um, for example, like uh, international students who live and um, in the UK where they have actually registered with a GP, uh, they will be able to access to the COVID-19 uh, vaccination in the UK, just like all the other, um, uh, I mean, like the other students or uh, the other EU uh, citizens are having it in the UK itself. And um, this means that if, let's say, uh, the older international students or students who are underlying medical condition, they will actually fall into the priority categories uh, in the same way as anyone else in the UK itself. So for students who are going to UK, uh, I would say that if, uh, I, I, I'm in Malaysia. If let's say um, you have not had your uh, vaccine, uh, maybe perhaps you can do it in the UK itself because um, I guess it will be, uh, I mean, you will get it much earlier uh, compared to uh, before you leave the country. So um, yeah, I would say that if uh, you are planning to leave in September, maybe perhaps you can just go get your jet from um, the UK itself. Yeah, and it's covered by NHS fee. 
So um, no worries and uh, yeah, mm, don't worry about the vaccine that they are from the UK itself. Mm-hmm. So that you don't need to uh, rush uh, and get your vaccine like in Malaysia because um, it's quite difficult for you to do it here now. True, that's true. Uh, mm-hmm. Because Malaysia currently is still a bit slow in the vaccination process. So that's mm, a very yeah. good advice uh, for Maggie that yeah. reason, because you know, going to UK can do it in the UK. Yeah, yeah because uh, as per uh, as per our state, uh, I mean our age group, right? Um, it shouldn't uh, they shouldn't be starting until end of this year or early next year. So um, mm. yeah, maybe perhaps I think uh, getting your job in the UK would be much uh, better compared to you wait in Malaysia to get it in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, yeah. Have we anything else to add on regarding this question? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Maggie. I, I <laughs> want to contradict you and only because it's an ever changing environment. Um, so the UK are currently vaccinating, I believe, those over 30. Please correct mm. me if I'm wrong. Yes. Um, and the need to be vaccinated before you travel may not be a government decision. It may become an airline decision that they will insist on passengers um, showing a oh, COVID yeah. passport. Oh, yeah. So there are lots of rumours, but nothing's confirmed. Mm-hmm. So whilst it is easier to access the vaccinations in the UK, I do fear that there'll be a global shift. And for governments to agree that will be impossible because they won't collectively agree this is what we want, but the mm-hmm. airlines are talking about it. So whilst mm-hmm. I agree with Maggie that it is so much easier in the UK, keep an eye on what the airlines are saying because they may limit travel um, and uh, only allow travel upon production of a COVID passport. That's mm-hmm. merely rumour at the moment, not confirmed, but mm-hmm. like when we spoke about COVID earlier, check the most recent updates before you travel, yeah. um, or, or contact the university um, mm-hmm. that, that you're joining, and they'll give you the most up-to-date information. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah right. Because yeah. I, I actually heard some of university, they are, um, they are planning to uh, have the vaccine in their university itself. So um, they are applying for this, and if those students that are without vaccination, then um, maybe Maybe perhaps they can get it in the university itself and they do not need to go to the GP. But if let's say ally um don't really or don't really allow them to board the flight, then yeah, I'm not too sure what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They will make things can I, complicated. Ask a, can I ask a quick question? I did read something <laughs> recently about Malaysian students having to get approval to travel from the ministry. Uh, yes. Yeah, they, they should need, uh, I mean, the students should apply for my travel pass um, in order for you to travel uh, out from Malaysia. So basically, I have actually uh, emailed the, our government uh, uh, department to ask them uh, actually how many days do you need? Um, yeah, uh, and they actually told me uh, at the current situation should be five to seven days, but it depends on the application. So yeah, I'm not too sure how long that they need Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, but this is their standard answer. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing this, Maggie and Kevin. <laughs> no yeah, this is a very important question from our students too. All right. <laughs> so next, I think we will take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, be, be sure that you type your question into the Q&A box. All right. So now we mm. start with the first questions. So this question, I think, is for Kevin. Is there any difference on MBA duration study for those with or without working experience? No, they can both be studied within a one year cycle. Um, There there is a difference if students want to study what we call extended professional practice, um, but that's a separate option. um, And it's only available on the fresher MBA. Um, But the short answer is um, no difference in course duration at all. They're all uh, three semester programs. Okay. Good to know. All right. Uh, next, for Maggie, yeah, from your point of view, accreditation, do you think credential triple crown more valuable in the industry compared to ACCA? Um, I would say that uh, it depending on um, how uh, or, or, or your, your job that uh, requires you. As far as I understand, the Triple Crown is basically um, the accreditation for those MBAs that, um, uh, that the award in the MBAs. But for this ACCA, this is actually a, a professional qualification which uh, need you, I mean, needed for you to be uh, asked to be a chartered accountant. So um, I would say that it's actually depending on uh, what is your uh, intention. If you were to become a chartered accountant, I think uh, not only ACCA, professional qualification is uh, real important. But um, as far as uh, what Kevin uh, explained, like, 
like the entire uh, for every, entire MBA uh, course like for entire night. Yeah, this triple count I think um is uh, one of the uh, uh luxury uh, I mean uh, a brand uh for uh students who are aiming to get a higher class uh MBA uh is it correct, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if I, you ask me, if I can jump in, I know the other question is aimed at you. Yeah. That- um, you can often study an MBA or an accounting qualification with multiple mm. stamps. You can do a yeah. master's that has a CMI or a CIM stamp. Yeah. What that does is it it confirms quality, but you're paying an additional premium for a brand, which often results in the exact same um, curriculum, that there's no huge variation. Um, so it's, it's merely, and I'm stealing your words, Maggie, it's a brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have we just lost our host? Uh, I'm not too sure. Baby, are you still here? Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, so I, I pressed wrongly already, so sorry. Okay, we have next question for Maggie here. So for student completing grade 12 from Indonesia, mm. is it eligible for the direct entry program for Bachelor Accounting at BPP? Um, as far as I remember, no. Um, they should have a foundation before they can join our Bachelor in Accountancy. So uh, uh, we normally need them to have a found- uh, We will actually put them into our advanced diploma uh, compared to a Bachelor. But if the student insists to start with a Bachelor degree, then um, yes, we need them to have a foundation background before they can join us. I see. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. The last question we have is, what is the least requirement to be employed by the big four accounting firm? <laughs> um, least requirement, normally I would say that um, as long as you have completed your professional qualification, uh, for you to get a job uh, from the big four is nothing, um, it's not difficult, I would say that. But um. The competition is there. Uh, uh, I mean, because everyone nowadays they actually have um, it's either addition uh, a professional qualification or they actually have a uh, additional master degree. So uh, when you are um, in that particular uh, interview, I think um, they should actually perform and they can actually I mean they can actually answer um, the interviewer's uh, question well in order for them to show up uh, what their skills that they have uh, when uh, they they are doing their uh, master uh, degree. Yeah, I would say that um, some of the uh, students who they have completed the ACCA, they might not be able to um, do as well. Uh, I mean, it really depends on the individual itself, yeah, in order to uh, to show what you have uh, in your CV or what skills that you, you have, yeah, in order for the big four to hire you, I would say that. All right. Thank you, Maggie. Okay, I saw one more question here under the uh, chat box. So I think this is for Kevin. Can I do my MBA in my home country and before few months before finishing my MBA, can I finish it abroad? I think he probably is asking about credit transfer. Um, credit transfers, yes, we're, we're always open. Um, many UK institutions are quite flexible. Um, providing we can recognize the credits from the home institution. Um, Can you start online? Uh, Yes, I I think COVID has forced so many universities to um, uh, be able to operate online. I worked closely with BPP many years ago and they developed an incredible online platform that was so engaging for students. And I'm sure this was seven years ago. I'm sure it's advanced uh, since then. So the future of education has changed. It used to be, am I studying online or sorry, on ca- online or am I studying on campus? They've merged. So the future is hybrid learning. So even if you're on campus, there'll be an online component. But to answer your question, can I study the first semester online? Sorry, I can't see the question uh, from home. Yes, universities and Coventry will be much more open to it than they ever were before. Before you'd have had to have made a choice. Do I study online um, or offline? Um, So at this moment in time, yes. Uh, But you must indicate in advance that your plans are to have a hybrid approach, because if you say you want to study online, you'll go to a different part of the university, which is called CU Online. And the support and the process is completely different to, if I call it an on-campus program. So the hybrid is an on-campus program with an online component. Online is a different part um, of the university. But if I may, I just want to um, add to Maggie's point. I, I heard a great thing in a webinar the other day. There was a question just now about 
almost it read as if if I chill out with my studies, can I still get a good job? Um, and I heard this this quote and I'm going to steal it and share it with everybody. Those that work hard when they're young can play hard when they're hold, older. Those that play hard when they're young have to work hard when they're older. So just to respond to that question, the best jobs are reserved for the best graduates. Um, so bear that in mind. If you chill out and expect um, you to be spoon fed later on, it may not work. So, so do study hard. And sorry for jumping on your question there, Maggie. I love that <laughs> quote and I'm trying to share it as often as I can with everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly, <laughs> for sharing. It's, uh, it's a very good point from you. Yeah. All right. Uh, it looks like we have covered all the questions tonight. So maybe we can start with Maggie. Is there anything else you wanted to cover before a wrap up? Um, if okay, I will just uh, share a little bit on our scholarship. Um, if you need additional support with funding your studies, and um, if you are able to demonstrate your academic excellence, uh, strong reference, or also relevant work experience, um, you may be eligible to apply for a scholarship or bursary. And uh, we are actually committed to support uh, the brightest future uh, talent from all the backgrounds. So if you are interested, you can actually speak to AECC and they will actually uh, help you on this. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Maggie. Kevin, no how about you? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add on from your side? Um, oh, what can I add? Um, I should have saved my statement just now. Study hard when you're young. <laughs> And it, and referring, mm. Yeah, referring to, to Maggie's point that, you know, the limitations are often finances and we can support you as institutions, Coventry and, and BPP, but it is reserved often for the, for the best students. So by studying hard today will increase your opportunities and options later on because every university will want you and how universities encourage you to study with us at Coventry is by introducing financial incentives. Um, so if you've got 3.0 CGPA or above, that's when you're in good territory. If you've got 3.5, that's when things get exciting. And the closer you get to four, assuming you're on a JPA system out of four, that's when mum and dad go to dinner party clubs and say, hey, my son got a scholarship. How much did you do? <laughs> so it gives bragging rights as well. So don't think that the next bit is easy. By preparing now, will make the next part and the transition um, much, much easier. But if you do have more questions um, about Coventry, the MBAs or any other programs, please contact. And this has been so confusing, AECC, because every time I said AECC, I was thinking ACCA. Don't contact, <laughs> Coventry, contact AECC. Don't confuse, Kevin. AECC? <laughs> please contact AECC. Okay. <laughs> all right all right thank you so much so tonight no we have problem. learned a lot of facts on the maths business and accounting i hope everyone enjoyed the sessions tonight we also have other sessions with different subjects areas that don't require you to be good in maths upcoming topics will be fashion game arts psychology and law if you have any other question regarding study in the uk please feel free to contact us another exciting thing before you go we would like to invite you to join our Australia UK Virtual Education Fair on the upcoming 12th June from 2 to 6 p.m. We also have VIP one-to-one -one virtual session from the 8th to 19th June for you to meet up with your preferred choice of UNICE representative. Come and join us any day and ask any question that you want to ask. Yeah, clarify all your doubts. So you may register from the link in the chat box there. Okay then uh, our counsellors will be in touch with you. All right. So once again, thank you, Karen and Maggie for the very informative presentation yeah. tonight. And thank also you. thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone who joined us. We love having you tonight and hope to see you all in the upcoming sessions too. Good night and stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.